Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. In today's video, I'm going to talk about how much sunscreen you need to apply, whether or not you need to reapply it every two hours throughout the day, and how to reapply it over makeup, as well as answer a couple of other questions that you guys have asked me recently, because this time of year I get so many questions about the proper use of sunscreen, and it's because I just put up my sunscreen testing video a couple of weeks ago in which I tested about 20 all-mineral sunscreen screens for the face and I test them with makeup and everything. So if you're interested in finding a great sunscreen, I can link that video for you right up here and you can go over and take a look at that one and maybe find the perfect sunscreen for you. So let's start with why it's important to use sunscreen every day, all year round in the first place. The number one reason is to prevent skin cancer. Here in the US, there are more new cases of skin cancer diagnosed every year than breast cancer, colon cancer, prostate cancer and lung cancer combined. So it may not be the cancer that is the one that you hear about the most or that has the most you know, fundraising for it, but it is very prevalent and it is fairly preventable just by using sunscreen. I just wanted to point out a study that was done in Australia. It looked at over 1600 people and it basically divided them into two groups and said, okay, group A, you apply sunscreen every day. And then group B, you apply sunscreen when you feel like it or how you would normally do it in your everyday life. After 15 years of follow-up, the group that used sunscreen every day had 40 to 50% fewer skin cancers than the group that used sunscreen just when they felt like it, which was probably when they were going to the beach. And the group that used sunscreen every single day also had significantly less skin aging than the group that used it just whenever. Now this was done back in the late 90s, I think, and the sunscreen that they used was not an SPF 50, it was an SPF 16. Imagine how much you can cut your chances of having skin cancer down by using sunscreen more effectively than those people in that study were able to use it. So that's the number one reason. The number two reason for me is that sunscreen is a great anti-aging tool that we have in our arsenal. UVA radiation actually causes 80 to 90 percent of the aging that we see on our skin. So if you're concerned about how your skin is going to age, then you definitely want to use sunscreen every single day. So there are two types of sun rays that hit our skin. There's UVB and UVA. You can think of UVB as B for burning, and you can think of UVA as A for aging. The difference is that UVA rays come right through clouds, they come through glass, and so they're hitting you all the time. Whereas UVB rays, the burning rays, you're kind of safe from them when you're indoors and they're less intense in the morning and later in the afternoon than they are in the middle of the day. But UVA rays are pretty much the same intensity throughout the entire day and all year round. So that's why you need to wear sunscreen every day all year. All right, so the first question was, how much sunscreen do I really need to apply? And there isn't really an easy answer to this because sunscreen application is kind of based on a formula and based on the SPF number on the label. What we do know is that in general, people don't apply enough sunscreen to get the SPF number on the label. If you look on the back of a tube of sunscreen, it gives you some application instructions, but they're a little vague, you know? It doesn't tell you exactly how much to apply. It tells you to apply liberally or to apply a generous amount, and who knows what that is, right? So what you need to know is that all around the world, sunscreen is tested to get the SPF number on the label. And in that testing, they use a certain amount of sunscreen. It's standardized across the board. So if you're not putting on the same amount that they use in the testing, then you're not getting the same SPF that's on the label. The amount of sunscreen that the FDA requires for the testing is two milligrams of sunscreen per square centimeter of skin. People who are much smarter than me and much better at math have done the calculations of taking a surface area of skin that it has you know, bumps and lumps and a nose in the middle of it, flattening it out, figuring out how many centimeters squared it is and how much sunscreen you would use. The generally accepted amounts are between a quarter and a half a teaspoon for your face and your neck. And the basic recommendation is for someone with a small face 
to use about a quarter teaspoon and someone with a larger face to use up to a half a teaspoon and then a shot glass for your body. In my sunscreen testing video this year, I showed how much a quarter teaspoon of sunscreen is versus how much the average person applied. And I got a lot of pushback from people saying, that wasn't a quarter teaspoon of sunscreen. You need to check your measuring spoon. That looked more like a quarter tablespoon of sunscreen. And I was like, uh, no people, I know how to use a simple measuring spoon. <laughs> so a quarter teaspoon is a lot more than you actually think it is. Let me just show you right now how much a quarter teaspoon is compared to what the average person puts on. This is a quarter teaspoon and it is full of sunscreen. So if we take this sunscreen out of here, there's my quarter teaspoon. The average person uses this much. Using the correct amount of sunscreen can make a huge difference in how that sunscreen applies. In this footage, I'm applying the normal amount that most people use to one side of my face. And then I'm applying an eighth of a teaspoon, which is you know, half the amount that you would use for your whole face to the other side of my face. And you can see that the result is quite different. The side where I'm applying not enough sunscreen isn't giving me as much white cast. It doesn't feel as greasy, but it's probably giving me a patchy SPF of under 10. The side where I'm applying an adequate amount of sunscreen to get the SPF on the label is greasier feeling, it's giving much more of a white cast, but I will be getting the full SPF 50 on the label. All right, and here's a question that I got last week after my sunscreen video. The question was, does the consistency or the fluidity of the sunscreen make a difference in how much you need to apply? So this question is about the difference between like a runny fluid sunscreen that runs down your hand like that versus a standard cream sunscreen like this one. So the answer to that goes back to the FDA testing. They still use the two milligrams per centimeter squared, whether the sunscreen was lightweight and fluid or whether it was a thick sunscreen. It didn't matter. They still use the same amount. And so you still need to use the same quarter teaspoon, whether it is a lightweight fluid sunscreen or whether it is a heavier, thicker cream. Now, I think you guys already know this, but I just wanted to make it clear that the SPF really is only testing for UVB radiation. As we talked about before, those are the burning rays. That's an easy test to do because you can easily produce a sunburn on skin just by exposing it to UV radiation. Unfortunately, there isn't a universally accepted standard of how to test for UVA protection in a sunscreen. Here in the United States, what you want to look for on the label are the words broad spectrum. That means that they've used a calculation to determine that there is adequate UVA protection in here. What they use is the in vitro critical wavelength method, which is a calculation based on the sunscreen ingredients and a critical wavelength of UVA coverage. It's not perfect, but it's what we have currently. But on some sunscreens, you'll see the label have a PA++ rating on it, like this one. And the PA system was developed in Japan, and it's based on a test that looks for skin browning. Um, this test isn't universally accepted. It's kind of faulty because it depends on if your skin would brown or not. So a PA rating of one plus means that it gives you some protection against UVA rays. And then two plus is a little bit, is a little bit more. Three pluses is more. Four pluses is more. Some U.S. manufacturers are actually looking at UVA coverage and having their sunscreens tested for that. So, for example, this sunscreen, which was the winner of my sunscreen testing this year, this is an SPF 50, but it also has a PA plus 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 rating, so that you're getting maximal UVA coverage out of your sunscreen. Now, a lot of people will give me the argument about the vitamin D production. And the thing about sunscreen and wearing sunscreen is that it's a screen, it's not a block. It doesn't completely keep every single ray from hitting your skin. So you get enough sun exposure through your sunscreen to still produce enough vitamin D. Research has been done into looking at people who wear sunscreen versus those who don't, and there's really no difference in the amount of vitamin D that their bodies produce. If you are concerned, you can always take a vitamin D supplement. All right, so let's look at the next question. Do you really need to reapply your sunscreen every two hours? And like everything with sunscreen, there's no easy answer for this one. 
it is greatly going to depend on what you are doing, how much sun exposure you are getting. The instructions on the label are made for when you're out in the sun continually, when you're at the beach, then the recommendation is definitely reapply every two hours. If you're swimming, reapply more often. If you're you know, sweating, reapply more often. But now that we're using sunscreen in, on more of like an everyday basis, when we're not at the beach, when we're not sweating, when we're not swimming, when we're not rubbing it, then do we really need to apply every two hours? To that, I say, I don't really think so because the sunscreen testing is for two solid hours of continual direct sun exposure. But is that what you're getting if you're hanging around on a Saturday in your house, maybe running a few errands? Probably not. Is that what you're getting if you're commuting to work and then sitting in an office and then commuting home? Probably not. I would say for scenarios like that, you're probably getting a cumulative total of two hours for the entire day. In general, sunscreen ingredients will diminish over time in their effectiveness. Some will diminish much more quickly. Some are stable much, much longer. There are actually very few sunscreens these days that aren't stabilized, that are completely worn off after two hours. So the idea that there's this door that slams shut after two hours and your sunscreen is completely ineffective as though you don't have any sunscreen on your skin, is not really true. There was a study done where they applied sunscreen and then tracked it for an eight hour workday to see how much effectiveness it lost. And at the end of an eight hour day, it had lost 30% of its effectiveness, which means that it was still 70% effective after an eight hour day. So probably enough for you to commute home without having to top up. But if your commute was like directly into the sun, then you might wanna top up your sunscreen. If you're going directly to your kid's soccer game and there was no shady place for you to sit on the field, then you might wanna to consider topping up your sunscreen. I work from home and I have a lot of skylights and windows in my house. And so I do put on my full coating of SPF 50 in the morning, but I do feel like that does protect me for the entire day. But if there are times when I'm gonna go outside, say to walk my dogs for 20 minutes, I'll wear a hat. So it's gonna depend on your scenario during the day, you know? It's gonna depend on what you're doing and then reapply as needed for the sun exposure that you're going to get for the rest of the day. And the last question is, how do I reapply my sunscreen over my makeup? If you don't wanna run the risk of messing up your makeup at all, I always recommend the mineral powder sunscreens. I think these are a great way to go to touch up in the afternoon. It's very difficult to apply enough sunscreen powder to get the full SPF on the label, but you're looking for a touch up in the afternoon. This is assuming that your base sunscreen from earlier in the day is still about 70% percent effective and you're just looking to do a little touch up in which case i definitely love these guys this is the one from color science this is their sun forgettable this is an spf 50 comes in a few different shades this one is from derma e this is an spf 30 i think this one also comes in a few shades i love this one i keep one of these in my handbag for touch ups you basically just bang it to get the sunscreen up into the brush and then you just apply it by brushing it around your face like this. The nice thing about it is that it's a powder, so if you tend to get a little shiny in the afternoon, that this can also mattify your makeup down. There are also stick sunscreens that you can use to reapply. So there is this one from Elta MD. This is their UV stick, which is an SPF 50 plus. There is Super Goop play this is a mineral stick which is an spf 50. these will kind of remove your makeup and mess it up but if you're looking for sunscreen coverage and you don't really care that much how your makeup looks you can use one of these um, there are also tinted sunscreens that can be used for your cheeks and your lips obviously they're not going to go on your entire face but this is the color science color balm spf 50 and this one is from kula it's their Nude Beach Lip Balm. This is an SPF 30. You can add this as blush, and this is a really pretty blusher, and that will give you some sun protection wherever you put it. Then there's this guy, you can put it on your lips, and that will give you some nice sun protection in a color. I don't really recommend the sunscreen sprays. I guess they would be good in a pinch. I don't have one here to show you. Um, they do contain a lot of SD alcohol. They do contain a lot of propellants. If you're gonna get one, I would get the kind with a pump applicator rather than the continuous spray kind. 
If it is a mineral sunscreen, definitely hold your breath while you're using it because it's not good for you to inhale titanium dioxide. Um, there's just so many things about them. Plus the way you apply them is it will go on in a spotty spray pattern. And the way that they recommend applying those is that you spray it and then rub it. And you're not gonna spray it and then rub your face because that's gonna mess up your makeup. Now, if you wanna put sunscreen directly on over your makeup, I would recommend either using a makeup with sunscreen in it or a sunscreen with a tint. If you prefer more of a matte look, I would get a tinted sunscreen that's matte like the Super Goop Matte Sunscreen. This is an SPF 40. I haven't tested this one super thoroughly, but I did wear it a couple of days and it's got a nice tint that kind of matches my skin tone and I like it that it is more of a matte finish. So I can just kind of pop this on my face because it does have a tint to it and it's matte, it will still make my skin look nice. Then the other thing that you can use is something like a makeup with an SPF 50. This is the It CC Plus Cream. It has an SPF 50 that's all mineral. But you know, when you're gonna apply makeup, you're gonna use like this tiny amount. This isn't gonna be enough to give you like the full SPF 50 that you really want. So there's really no good way to reapply your sunscreen over makeup and get the full SPF on the label. I just wanna show you what this looks like since I did put some on there. I mean, I think that actually looks pretty nice. It didn't really disturb my makeup too much. You know, it's not like I'm rubbing it on or anything. I'm just kind of wiping it over the surface and I think that actually looks really nice. Here's the side without any sunscreen. This is using the blush sunscreen and this is applying the It CC cream on top on my nose. I did a whole video about reapplying sunscreen over makeup a few years ago. Some of the products may be a little outdated, but I'll link that one right up here for you guys so you can bounce over and look at that. I'll also link it at the end screen so you can take a look at that afterwards. And remember that sunscreen is an imperfect tool. It's not the only tool we we have we have other things like wearing hats wearing protective clothing just wanted to show you this hat this is one that I always recommend this is a UPF 50 hat it's very stylish it looks great sunglasses are super important you know you've got to use other measures to protect yourself I had the opportunity to go to the ADA conference a couple years ago with Neutrogena and I learned so much about sunscreen and I interviewed a dermatologist there and I think the most telling and interesting thing that I learned from him was when he pulled up a picture on his phone of a patient of his who had used sunscreen on her face, but she had never put it on her neck. And this is the picture he showed me. You can see the difference between her face and her neck, the difference between using sunscreen and not using sunscreen. You know, so it just shows the difference that even a little bit of sunscreen can make. And so while I do want you guys to do it right, and I do want you to reapply when you need to reapply, and I do want you to use the right amount to get the full SPF on the label, but at the end of the day, Try to do it right, but if you can't, just get it on there. Just put on some sunscreen and it will still be the best thing that you're doing for your skin in the long run. So that is it for today's video, everyone. If you found it helpful and informative, go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. As always, I thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate your watching. Have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.